Um, so, as he said, I'm Cristina, I come from Barcelona. Uh, you can find me on Drupal.org as Secrina or on Twitter as Chumillas because Secrina was already taken. I'm a senior front end developer at Lulabot, and as he said, that I do a few things uh, on the Drupal community. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about the present and future uh, of the Drupal administration user interface. But first, I would like to just talk a little bit about the past and where are we coming from. This is a screenshot, I think it was Drupal 1, one of the first interfaces that we had. Um, basically, it was something that a developer built for a developer. And it's been basically like that all over the time. So until since Drupal was born, it was all the interfaces have been this um, main um, uh, focus on, on site builders, we could say. Uh, it was a huge step forward when we started to have other user interfaces, like the one that we, uh, well, it was uh, implemented, I think it was Drupal 7 for Views UI. So, um, all over this time, what we've got is a focus on site builders, meaning that uh, things like the toolbar, things like most of the forms, most of the things that we have on the interface are thought and prepared for site builders. But what's the thing? The thing is that um, nowadays uh, and over the past years, uh, Drupal websites have, be have become more and more uh, big and there's someone else that is spending a lot of hours uh, on a Drupal website that is not a site builder or a developer. The content author, content manager, content editor, however you want to call them or whatever is their role, they need to manage content. And our interface is not prepared for that or it's not thought for that. Over the last years, it hasn't been its goal. And they have to swim along uh, menus and stuff that is not thought for them. That's the past and a little bit of the present. So what's going on to, on uh, Drupal today on the on a interface? Um, Drupal Admin UI is also the name uh, of the the shortened name that we had for the um, Drupal Administration User Interface and JavaScript Modernization Initiative. Uh, we had to shorten that at some point. Uh, it was an initiative that we started some years ago and. Basically, our goal was to completely change Drupal. Obviously, that didn't happen. But anyway, nowadays we are uh, on Drupal 9, um, and we are about to have Drupal 10 in a few months. Uh, what is going to happen there is that um, two themes, two main themes that have been along uh, for over well over the last years, like Bartik or Seven. The theory is that they are both going away and two new themes are going to replace them. Olivero uh, is going to replace Bartik, that's for sure. And in theory, Claro is going to replace Seven. That's not that sure. Um, uh, basically, the, this, uh, we have several scenarios here. Um, in, theory, in theory, Drupal 10 should come up, um, should be released uh, around August, the first scenario is August, um, meaning that it will be come at the same time as Drupal 9.4, meaning that we need to have an alpha, meaning everything needs to be in uh, by the alpha, it means in June. So it means in three months we should have Claro stable and uh, already the default theme, so complicated. And also the other, uh, the second scenario is having uh, Drupal 10 in December, meaning that in September we should have the alpha release. It's a little bit more time, but there's a lot of work that needs to happen. It, and it's not just Claro, we have uh, the CKI Editor 5, um, we need to replace jQuery UI and as much of jQuery as we can from core. We have the new starter, uh, the theme starter kit, the uh, Lyo builder improved, the uh, media improved. Well, we have a lot of things that needs to happen and are on the way but not ready yet. So we have these two scenarios. Um, Claro is uh, this new theme that should become um, the default theme when you install Drupal. And basically, it's based on the new Drupal admin design system. 
It's a new design system that we came up when we started the designs for the new Drupal admin interface. It defines colors, fonts, um, new components, well, a bunch of things that um, basically um, Claro is using. Um, Claro basically is a clone of Seven. Uh, we basically and literally cloned Seven. We used Seven at that, uh, I think it was uh, one year and a half ago, and we decided we just, we're just going to use Seven and change all the styles to Claro. Basically, the goal here was not building something from a scratch. Uh, so if Seven is good enough to be as the default theme, Claro should be good enough too. Because one year and a half ago, and we are still trying to get that done. But yeah, anyway, that's the goal. We, the goal is to have the uh, Claro as the default theme, and we have a um, few steps here. So first, we need to get Claro as a stable. Uh, if you right now um, enable Claro, um, basically, you're going to have this thing, in parentheses, saying experimental. Um, we are almost there. We are basically we have five stable blockers. Two, are, two of them are already RBTC, meaning that they are rebuilt. We just need to commit. Uh, then we have two more. One, it's just it needs a uh, reroll. I think this morning I saw that, and it goes already there. And uh, there's another issue that uh, just needed a few things, and and they help and they help getting that moving that forward. So it's almost there. And one last um, issue that needs some work done. So we are almost there, but this is Drupal core. Every time that someone does something, maybe the issue just stops. Um, it doesn't have any activity for over two weeks or something like that. Sometimes those are big issues, and not everybody is able to actually review something that has um, PHP, CSS, design uh, calls that not need to be done, accessibility. So sometimes are big things. So well, that's the thing that we need to finish for stable. Um, the number that you see here is the issue, the roadmap to get that as stable. And after that, we need to make, when we get uh, Claro as a default theme, uh, the, uh, the, as a stable, it going to, it's going to be the default theme. For doing so, we still need two main things to happen. Uh, we need to redesign the, the installer, because when you install, um, a Drupal site, you see the installer, and it needs to uh, play well with a new design system. And the other is that we need we need to redesign the settings tray, the of Canvas uh, dialog. Um, that's a little bit tricky because that's a dark background, meaning that we need to come up with a dark so a dark pattern and a dark um, combination of colors, and we need to figure out how to have a dark color or dark thing there. But I'm going to talk a little, a little bit more about that later. OK, so that's what we have so far. Um, and I want to talk a, a little bit more about uh, where should we go. But disclaimer, I'm not going to talk about um, how to preview content, how to have fancy drag and drop, um, like Lego builder things. It's um, Beyond this talk, because there are a lot of things that play on that side, uh, like the couples versus uh, classic theming in Drupal, uh, well in Drupal. So it's a longer conversation and a way more complex thing that I don't want to uh, spend that much time in that in there because we have different problems to solve there, and those are different things. So basically, overall. Um, we need to improve the designs for the new uh, interface. And yeah, I know, I mean, we don't even have Claro uh, as the default theme, and we want to improve the designs. So yeah, basically, as I was saying, uh, um, Claro is just um, implementation of seven, a refresh, a style refresh of seven, meaning layouts, all the components are the same. Uh, most, of the thing, uh, most of the things are exactly the same. We haven't improved. The, the interface over the last years, it's basically the same layout that we had for, I don't know, Drupal 6, for example. It just it has new colors and new fields, and that's all. So we really want to start improving components like, for example, tags or a lot of other components that we have in there. And we want to improve how they look, how they work. So we want, that's the next step 
once we have Clarion Core, we want to start improving things. Something that, as I was saying, really needs to happen at some point is uh, layout changes. As I was saying, we've been using the same layout over years. The problem is that we can't just change the whole layout without actually thinking uh, what do we wa where do we want to go. And um, as you can see, on Drupal, we just don't have one kind of form, which is the uh, node edit form. We have forms for uh, configuration for the site. We have a lot of forms. And not all the forms should use the same light layout. So we couldn't, uh, we didn't want to create a new change all the things uh, initiative again because uh, that's not smart. And at the end, things don't change. So uh, we came up with a um, four-phase um, way to change the layout. The first phase is basically improve legibility, not much than that. Improve the UX. Um, as you can see, this is the how it was like a few months ago. Um, this is a screenshot with my laptop. It's not a huge screen, it's just a regular screen. And this doesn't have any max width. What's the problem in here? If you want to jump from the first line to the second one, it's going to be easy. But if you have a huge paragraph in there, you don't know which is the next line. Basically, on a design perspective or, or in a, on a UX perspective, we should have between 60 and 80 characters you see what we have here, like 150 or more. So um, we decided that we wanted to make the form shorter uh, to have a better leg legibility, not just for text, but also for a lot of other uh, components. The problem there is that, that we decided that, I think it was 60, 600 pixels uh, was the, the, the initial size that we set, and we, all agreed, and we committed that. And then people from Paragraphs, the module Paragraphs said, hey, what are you doing? I mean, we can't do anything now. So we changed that, and, and it's uh, right now a little bit um, wider, but it still is not completely wide, but, uh, like the whole page as it was before. And that's, that obviously needs uh, some more iteration. So um, the second phase, we haven't started yet, but the second phase is basically to have all the regions that we have on the layout uh, as independent regions. Um, this is basically a test that I did uh, just for here uh, um, with a few CSS changes on, on the, with the, um, the, the browser tools. And it's super easy. You just start a little bit, uh, some wrapper, and then you have to change a little bit more. And it means that this next step is not going to be super hard to implement. This is just a form, but we have other forms, or other pages like navigation pages, and we need to figure out how to solve that. How to solve that. But in theory, it shouldn't be that, uh, that hard. So this is like a middle step to have a um, nicer UI. This is a screenshot uh, from Jin. Do you all know what Jin is? Yeah? OK, somebody, OK. Jin is basically um, a theme based on Claro. Uh, Sasha, uh, the other designer from Claro, um, we had so many ideas one year ago. We wanted to do a new layout, a new menu. We wanted to move things around, to move everything. We wanted to do a lot of stuff. But we are working with Drupal Core. Things are not that easy. Uh, we need to take into account accessibility. We need to get people reviewing the patches, uh, get people doing the doing the work so it wasn't that easy. So basically, he needed something for some client projects, and he um, created Jean as a um, theme. Uh, well, uh, it's based on Claro, and he basically implements a lot of uh, cool features in there. So um, as the thir third phrase, uh, we want to uh, move the meta sidebar to the right. And uh, the theory is super simple. Let's just move fit on the right and done. But that's not that easy. Uh, we need to figure out how it is going to play with the off canvas dialog. We need to figure out if we want to make this available for other pages like administri administration pages and things like that. So as you can see, the further you go on the planning, more uh, things on the air are, and we need to yeah. How does the sidebar work with mobile? With? Mobile. Uh, That's a good question. Yeah, I know. Um, so, uh, so far, 
most of the time we just move things at the bottom. But the thing is that if we have, we want to have that here. That's not that easy. Just put a hamburger icon on the right, and then you have that because well, you will also have the toolbar on the left or on the top. So we need to work that things out. And actually, the fourth uh, phase is um, working with the rest of the regions of the page. Basically. Um, that's one of the things that we designed like two years or well, one year or two years ago. And as you can see, we just decided a lot of really cool things like let's just have a, a bar at the top where we can place a lot of things or maybe have the, the action uh, actions in the bottom and the red crumb in the top. Let's move the toolbar on to the right, but mobile, um, of Canvas dialogues and all the other pages and it's not that simple. Uh, we are working with Drupal. You never know what people is going to set up on their forms. Uh, maybe you have paragraphs. Maybe you have tabs. Maybe you have vertical tabs. I mean, it's super complicated to have enough flexibility for everything. So we need to do step by step. And yeah, basically, the form is the, is the, the node form or the entity form is the most important page. Um, on the back end, uh, on the admin side, obviously not on the front end, but that's the main place where we are trying to move reg regions around. So that's basically the plan that we have to uh, improve, which is, uh, well, the, the, the entity form itself. Uh, something else that we re would really like to start doing once Claro is uh, stable uh, would be uh, changing a lot of things, for example, uh, reference identities or drag and drop um, uh, regions inside, let's say, paragraphs or other um, things that where you are actually referencing entities. The drag and drop um, uh, designs themselves. I mean, are we really want? Do we really want to keep using um, yellow for that? Are we going to switch colors to add other patterns in there? We really want to take a look to all these things, uh, but we are not able to do that yet because I'm not sure if I said that we need to get Claro's stable. So something else, uh, it's super small, I know, but it's, and it goes way longer. This is a meta tags module, and it's placed on the right, on the sidebar. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's been there for years. Um, do we really want to keep doing these kind of things? Um, what about just placing that into uh, another tabs on the top, like either vertical or horizontal tabs? The thing is that ideally we shouldn't change pa the page when we, s when we switch to one place to another. Or maybe we wa we, what we really want is to have just this side a little bit wider. That's something that we need to discuss. We need to find out what are, what are the best solutions. And we really need to improve these things. Uh, something else that we uh, need to start figuring out is, for example, this is another uh, screen uh, shot from Jean. It's to, uh, this one is for uh, Jean with a uh, field layout, where you can actually have two things in the same uh, region, two columns. That's something that we maybe should be able to provide, but right now um, we don't have really complex forms um, uh, in, in core. I mean, we have, we have this option, but not in core. Something that uh, we need to start improving also is the fields themselves. For example, um, we don't have uh, that many fields that unless you do that by default on the field, you set that up on the field. Like, let's have, for example, uh, checkboxes. You don't have that on the admin interface by default. And um, Something that I really would like to start doing at some point is uh, improve the knowledge that we give to the site builders. Um, who actually builds the, the forms where the content editors are going to uh, put their content? You. Most of you are developers, right? Who has uh, UX knowledge or experience or studies or, yeah, so the thing is that most of the people, uh, obviously not everybody, and that's really cool, but a lot of the, t or most of the time, whoever builds the uh, forms for the site build, uh, so for the content editors, are developers. And uh, as it was said uh, on uh, several sessions already today, 
um, developers use technology and all the tools on a di completely different way as uh, people that is actually using content and filling in content. So that's something that we could change, giving some instru instructions to the site builders. For example, when is the limit where you have too many choices and you should jump into a select box? Who decides that? It's a site builder. And does the site builder usually know these kind of things? When should we have a, set, a select box, a normal one, and instead of that, jump and have a, a JavaScript one where you can actually search? What's the limit? That, where should that change? So all this knowledge, um, UX people has that knowledge, but most of the developers, they don't. And they are building the, the forms, actually. So ideally, we should give all that instructions in line, because let's be honest, uh, people is not going to go and research how to build a Drupal form on the internet. They are just going to build things. And if they have the info right in there, the, where, uh, the, where the, pl the place where I'm actually setting all the things up, it could be perfect. Like, um, this is a screenshot for the form display. Uh, we have always uh, the, the, the icon there where we can have more options. If we just had some more information there, some more instructions, some more, let's be uh, for the select please, for example, if you go over 12, 10 items, just select the select list inst instead of the, uh, the check boxes. That's something that could improve a lot the user interface. Uh, for the content editors. Another place where we could put a little bit more of the info is when we are set, we are creating a new uh, field set, uh, a field, sorry, and we could, uh, we could uh, give some more instructions there. So um, that, could be, that could become at some point a new initiative. Uh, basically, uh, it's, I'm not saying the same as the initiative uh, for the help topics. This is already uh, inside core as I think it's experimental, but that's basically putting all uh, the modules information in the help uh, section and that's just there. What I'm saying is trying to use the existing UI and we will be able to have independent commits per field uh, or independent um, issues per field, meaning we will then wait, we will then need to have like a huge commit that committers uh, need to, to review like, I don't know, hundreds of lines and be sure that we have all the accessibility tested there and everything. It could then be a huge commit and also it could have a lot of UX people involved and start planning all these things with UX people. So ideally this should become a, a new initiative and we should be able to improve the, the user interface. Something also that will help a lot um, with uh, improving our interface will be more JavaScript. And I'm not talking about completely changing the user interface with React or something like that. Although this, um, can, this is a Jira screenshot, uh, a Jira UI. Um, here you can just click in there or uh, for example, GitHub works the same way. You don't really need to change the page a, for a topic, uh, if you're working on an issue, everything that you need to do for that issue is in, the, in this stage. You can switch between tabs for the comment and history, you can add all the things in the right and the meta information, all that. So um, we are switching between pages all the time and if we add a little bit more of JavaScript uh, to our UI, things will be a little bit better. Um, there's a few initiatives uh, going over that. I think the, the, well, the most important one is the decouples menus initiative. I really don't know much about that, so I don't want to uh, go that into what is going on. Uh, I know that they are talking about two main um, use cases. The first is a menu to uh, have a global menu and a static like we could say the, the toolbar for example and we could have well, or the, even the toolbar or the, the menu that you have at the bottom of an app and another one could be a menu for that changes from page to page and can be different from different users depending on the role. Something that could work on that site is the new content creation menu, menu proposal. It's on the ideas issue queue. Um, basically there's been already a few issues uh, filled for on, on the ideas uh, for Drupal core. 
because right now, um, as I was, we, you, we, we all know, uh, we have the toolbar, which actually has the information architecture based on what the Drupal, the, the site builders do. Uh, we have the content, the structure, reports, people. When we give that to us, uh, to a content editor, they suddenly have the toolbar and they have some stuff in the content, some stuff in the structure, and then randomly have several items on the top. A few of them then don't have anything inside. and. So that's, that's a problem, and, and that doesn't make a lot of sense for, for the content editors. So this proposal basically uh, tries to group things. Um, uh, the idea is, for example, if you want to create new things, if you want to create a tag, or you want to add media or, or user count, you could have a, 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 a menu to create things. You could have a menu to manage things if you have permissions. And then you will have like an advanced tab uh, for all the settings that you are able to, to change. Basically having a completely different menu for um, someone that is not a site builder. Something uh, new that we really need for Drupal core, especially for the admin UI, because if people is working all the day with this interface, uh, that's something that probably all of you have done, is have a dark or a dark mode. Um, this is a screenshot uh, of what we designed one year and a half ago. Uh, we haven't implemented that because I'm not sure if I said that Claro is not stable, so we are focused on that. So, um, well, basically we need to come up with uh, all the new uh, color scales or the same ones but on used on a different range. And uh, we have been focused uh, on defining all the grays, defining all the blues, uh, getting rid of the 50 shades of gray, uh, 50 shades of blue, and um, we need to come up right now. We have that almost sorted out, and we need to start designing for the uh, dark interface. Um, but not just the dark interface, also the high contrast mode. Um, maybe someone is going to talk about that today at some other session. Not sure if Mike is around, but he's maybe going to talk about something related to that. But we want to define uh, the main variables like primary color, secondary color, and all these things. And we want to define just the first colors. And then if you switch the theme, you're going to have the primary color still in there the same variable, but the value, the value is going to change, ideally for the dark theme or the high contrast theme. So we need to come up with different themes. Another thing that we ideally should do, uh, Olivero is already doing that, um, is ideally having the option to uh, change the colors of the interface to be able to let people customize the color. I mean, if your color, your um, logo is red or orange or whatever, you should be able to just change at least the main color, the primary color. But you could actually be able to do that um, with a palette, for example. This is a, a screenshot from Slack, the user interface uh, for Slack, where you can choose dark modes, light modes, multicolor modes, and you can actually customize your own color. That's something that we ideally should have. And there is actually a... Um, an issue in the ideas issue queue uh, um, that is suggesting to get rid of the color module and move that into a country module. But there's also another issue that is proposing, uh, it's suggesting to replace, completely replace a color module f uh, with a solution that works directly with CSS variables. And actually, Olivero is already doing that. So it couldn't be uh, that hard to implement something like this and let people uh, customize their Drupal site with the logo, with the, um, the colors and everything. And well, as in the future, we could suggest them if the color is, it has enough contrast or it doesn't have enough, co enough contrast. So some things that we could change in there. Some other things, I don't know, for example, we could uh, customize the spacing. Uh, some of the feedback that we had at the beginning for Claro is that we had huge um, 
spacing. Uh, we came from seven where the tables were super small and then suddenly Claro came up and said a huge spacing everywhere and people said, hey, I want to keep seeing 20 rows in my computer and I don't I only see five of them because it's not just a table it's just all the space over that so something that could be customized could be also that something really important also is accessibility as uh, so we discussed that a while ago and we would really like to let users choose their font size or prefer animation or not and actually a lot of the, these things people already have that on the browser so maybe we could set up something where we let the user uh, choose that on the browser and, and we just change the UI based on that so those are things that could actually improve the user interface uh, something that is already working uh, and we have that already as a country module is the autosave. Uh, there's a module, it's called autosave form. Uh, it really works out of the box. You just install that and it saves all the entity forms. That's something uh, that is really important for a lot of content editors. And well, the way it currently works is just every 60 seconds it saves the form, but it has um, uh, an experimental feature where it detects every change that the DOM has, and if something is changed, then it automatically saves that. So that's something that works out of the box, so if you really nowadays want to improve your forms, just install that and it's, it's going to work. On the core perspective, there are other, a lot of other things that need to happen. As I was saying, for the Drupal 10, we still need to see uh, several things happening. Uh, we need to see several media improvements. Um, not sure if you heard uh, Dries, uh, uh, Dries note. Uh, he came up with the idea to have several things that were unfinished and put them on the same box. Basically, easy out of the box. And um, this way we ended up having Claro, Layout Builder, and Media, media on the same um, initiative and basically it's the people that we haven't been able to finish the stuff at the, uh, at the time that we needed to have it. So we basically are together and we're trying to come up with the minimum viable thing to get um, to say that we finished the, the initiative. And um, media has a lot of things um, in the media roadmap. Um, one of them for example is coming up with um, fancy way to have things like drag and drop, um, uh, galleries and everything. Uh, not sure if you know that uh, drag and drop is already a thing in Drupal core. It's been there for ages. It's just that it doesn't look like that. So we need to improve all these user uh, interfaces. We need to improve all these designs to have more modern user interfaces and come up with better ideas. But um, first we need to have a few things like, for example, the drag and drop region, we need to change its markup to be accessible. So several things need to happen there. And yeah, um, yeah, finishing up a little bit, um, the dashboard is something that seems super simple and those of you that have been around for years know that th this has a lot of history. Actually, uh, there was an attempt uh, for Drupal 7 to, change, to have a dashboard. This isn't the screenshot of what they were planning to, to have. I'm not sure if you see that, but there's a lot of em empty space here. And that's why, uh, well, one of the reasons is that to have content here, you need to decide who is the target for that content. And are we were they targeting uh, content authors? Were they targeting site builders? So something that actually changed since then is we have new roles. Uh, well, for now we just have the content editor role, and we are we could be able to target several things, uh, <coughs> several views for content or for uh, the last change content or several things for each of the roles that are going to get in for Drupal Core. This is just an idea of what could happen here, having some menus special for uh, content authors. Uh, having some data, having a, the tour module set up from the start. So we could have several things and that's not a big thing that need, would need to happen. So 
some final thoughts. Um, basically, we need to have, uh, Claro, I know I said that 20 times already. We need to have Claro as a default admin theme for Drupal 10. Basically, because right now we are maintaining two themes. All the things that we are fixing for 7, we are not fixing them for Claro. And this, we are going to have to do that again for Claro. And basically, we have the people divided doing stuff on two places. And we need to happen that on just one place. It means that we'll have more testers. Uh, the UI will improve. And this way, we will be able to focus our efforts and our new improvements on new things. And um, things like uh, the one that I was saying, um, just coming back to this list, because uh, those are some ideas for new initiatives. Uh, so far, the initiatives that we've had have, have been huge initiatives that have have had a lot of troubles having enough uh, people involved from the beginning, uh, people involved over the time. I mean, sometimes people just come one month and then they disappear. Uh, we don't usually have enough funding to have people working on that. Um, there's not that many core contributors that are full-time working with Drupal Core, so that's usually difficult to have a huge initiative. Some things that could become an initiative, for example, could be the form to choose the accent color. That's something that is almost in there, so it would mean just to come up with a way to move it into core, to have accessibility review, and that could be that. So if you are interested in helping out in, on one of these things, dark mode, for example, for example, is something that needs to happen soon. For, uh, the new role menu, it's something that news needs people. So most of them need people that are not just developers, designers, uh, UX people, um, strategies, people from uh, several roles could actually help a lot on, the, on here. So if you want to uh, get involved, just let me know and we will try to set up several initiatives um, uh, to fix all these things when Claro is in core. <laughs> So please help us getting Claro uh, into stable. This is the issue. Um, you can join on the admin UI channel or on the easy out of the box. Come to the admin UI better one. Just leave media ones. <laughs> Don't. This is record. Okay, I didn't say that. <laughs> so yeah, well, help us. Uh, if you want to get involved, there are small issues. There are big issues. So. There are issues that just need some review, so help us, please. And that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. I actually realized the checkbox, like the radio is converting to a select list. Something we wrote for Drupal Commerce six years ago does that. It's a widget which automatically transforms when you hit seven options. Nice. I never thought of it. We should probably make an issue for Core about that. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll do For the dark mode stuff, is it just done by a select box somewhere, or does it actually sense from the browser what mode the... You can have two, two ways. Um, there are several apps that actually let you choose, or actually just uh, let you uh, let the browser read from the system. That's something that we need to decide. That's not So first we need to come up with the designs, how to implement that, all the background work that needs to happen, like converting all the variables to work on both the light mode and the dark mode, and there's a lot of work, but oh, this thing need to, needs to happen at some point. This call needs to be done at some point also. Yeah? You mentioned that uh, Jin uh, in some way kind of served as a, like a place for features that couldn't make it into Claro, so it can land. Is, is there any way that uh, things that were implemented for Jin can make their way back into Claro, or does it not work that way? <clears throat> yeah, it does that work that way, and actually it's really cool because uh, some, some things that uh, Sasha implemented on, on Jin, like, um, what was it, the, the filters for the, for, the content, uh, for the content page, he did a few changes that we discussed that we wanted to do, but we didn't have time to do that. So he implemented that on Jin, and he said, okay, this is not working, don't do that. Do another thing. 
So no, obviously it's not, don't do that. I mean, there are a lot of things that Jin is doing. Yeah, for example, the toolbar that Jin has, it is really, really, really cool. It's not that easy to move that to core because obviously there are a few things, but it's a really cool feature. There are a lot of things on Jin that I, I really like. It's just that Drupal, I mean, the designs that you see right now for Claro, they change like, I don't know, 10 times on, I'm not even changing, not saying small color changes because we changed the, the blue color has changed, I don't know, over 20 times. So yeah, uh, I'm not saying that, I'm saying a lot of things change even with accessibility feedback. The design changed so much over the first months when we get several people involved, uh, testing everything and saying, this doesn't have enough contrast or this is not a way that people will understand the user interface. So that was super cool. But at the same time, it slowed us down. Yeah. So at least we are, we are sure that most of the things are accessible right now. Yeah. Uh, question. Uh, I'm actually redoing our distros uh, at the thing. We're using Fire on the basis. And uh, I guess I'm just trying to throw it as an idea. I, we have a lot of tall, longer pages. And our original admin thing just plays loosely on seven. I had put just a simple back to top button that you just kind of like, you know. You know. Um, one of our, we have our own client services team and one of their biggest complaints was about the, big, the long pages that you look at the action buttons at the top too, so we don't have to scroll all the way to the bottom. And what I did was I actually have a, a more kind of proof of concept. Instead of putting them in two places, I just put the back, but the, the, then make them in a sticky footer and with a kind of a frosted background, a semi-transparent background, so you know that there's still stuff underneath there. And so it's like, oh, at least our buttons are here. You know, so I just, or there's things like that. So uh, one of the screenshots that I showed is one day that, well, one of the, the meetings that we had, we came crazy and we said, oh, we can have the left side bar, the right bar, the top bar, and, and the bottom bar, it was like, uh, you then you end up with a small place to actually have the form. The thing is that if you have the actions at the top, sometimes you have really long titles mm -hmm. for the breadcrumb, where do you put the breadcrumb? The breadcrumb. Um, if you have the sticky uh, navigation on the sticky section at the bottom, you can have just the, well, you can have there the, the action, um, bar, save we would say, save, cancel, and Back everything, the but then right. it's a really small thing and it takes all the things. Yeah, we've so, reduced our button sizes uh, a little bit. But you can't actually reduce that because you need to have a minimum height so they are uh, okay. good enough for, again, for the torch, well, it's yes, 45, so. It's Drupal. I mean, you need to let people do all the things, but at the same time, do that on a proper way so everything works because then people from paragraphs come and say, what the fuck have you said? <laughs> so, come on, we can't use paragraph anymore. And it makes sense. I mean, it's one of the most used um, modules and you can screw up, screw things up on that side. So, okay. Drupal core, everything needs to work. So, we need to go step by step. Sure. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>